and welcome to the old neighborhood. As a Ferrari races down my old street. And hey everyone, it is Friday, April 7th. The time is 6.57 p.m. and the temperature is around 11 degrees Celsius. I am here in Seoul, South Korea. where I've been for a little over a full day now. And right around the corner from here is a building where I lived for four years. So we're gonna take a look at that. And then we'll be going for a walk around Gangnam. It's not the most pedestrian friendly of areas. But it is one of the most popular spots in the city. Pretty much on any night, let alone a Friday. <laughs> so living here was super convenient. There's my old building. I've often talked about it on the channel. Well, maybe not often, but I've certainly mentioned it before. And I think it was in early 2009 when I first moved in and I had a unit on the fifth floor. Then a year and a half later, someone moved out and I moved up to the 12th floor and my view was facing the other side, so I had quite a view. My view on the fifth floor was out front here, and this used to be a 24-hour convenience store. They had a lot of tables set up, so it was quite convenient to grab some drinks and some food and hang out in front. It's also pretty cool to have a golf simulator attached to your building. That's still there. But the last year I was here, this building went up. And there used to be a Burger King over there. Like many things in Korea, I found they no longer exist. I'll be heading down into Gangnam Station and I'll be crossing the street because that's the best way to do it. And I was teaching at a school. It was about a 25 minute walk from here. But usually what we would do is a few of us would come out and we would just grab a taxi and that would only run a few dollars each. is Jamsho, and that's where the Olympic Stadium is. And you'll also find the tallest building in Korea, I think it's the Lotte Tower. That went up after I moved away. And this street is Tehrano, or rather Tehran Road. Just up ahead is an entrance to Gangnam Station. Which at least when I lived here was by far the busiest subway station in the entire country. And probably top 10 in the world. 
There was well over 100,000 people passing through here each day. And this on the left is all new. That recently opened up. But the main stretch, when people refer to Gangnam, is usually right over there. And that heads down towards the Han River. So I want to get over to that intersection over there. And to get there, we're going to cut through the station. I've heard this place has been kind of ravaged by the pandemic. A lot of our favorite spots have closed down, as have a number of major retailers. But there's a ton of people moving through here. So there's two subway lines, line two, that's the circle line. That's the crazy busy one. There's also the Shin Bundan line. That one went in in 2011, if I'm not mistaken. And I think line two opened up in 1983. And in 2011, or just before that, they completely gutted this place. I think that was to coincide with the work of adding a whole new line. And when it reopened, it looked pretty much exactly like what it used to up with slightly newer tiles. So you can enter into line two over there and this is really handy. That shows you when the next train is coming. So we were here, and we're going here, and I'm going to walk that way a bit. And I'll be meeting some old friends after this and going out for dinner and some drinks. And earlier today I went through, or I went for a walk through the neighborhood where I lived before this one. You know what, I'm going to see if New York Fries is still there. Oh, I think it has become a Krispy Kreme. Washroom facilities here, of course. That's standard at a Korean subway station. And earlier today, I was in Myeonggam. That's an area that was always packed. And it was really kind of a shell of its former self. So I'm hoping this area has fared a little better. It was just this month that they eased up on mask restrictions and entry requirements. And we were just over on that corner. It's pretty much just as I remember it. 
there's a dedicated busway going down the middle of this street. And this building on the left here looks new. Let's see if I can pan up. In a second. There's another new building. So in the direction that I'm walking is another subway station that serves this area, Shin Nonhyun. And when I used to walk to work, I would go that way. That's cute. Well, they've added these planters to the sidewalk. There's a Muji. And Pagoda is a large English academy. I think there's more big English academies in Gangnam than anywhere else at least that serves an older university and adult crowd. I have so many memories walking around here, many of which I was just a little bit over the limit. There's a CGV movie theater. a few pedestrian crossings just up ahead. So if you're wondering how to get to the other side of the street, I'll show you in a second. It looks like there's some people crossing now. They do get pretty busy. There's a Giordano. I have a few sweaters in my closet from that very store. I also have a pair of shoes from the ABC Mart just across the street. There is street food here. And there's a street that runs parallel to this main street just over there that is full of bars and restaurants. And I'm going to circle back and walk in the opposite direction down that street. And then it's a similar setup over there on the other side of the street. Cacao Friends store? That's <laughs> kind of ridiculous. I saw that the last time I was here. There's a Lush. Actually, the last time I was here, I did exactly the same thing. I made a video, and then I met some friends. Hey, there's a Five Guys coming, summer 2023. I remember when they opened up a Johnny Rockets just on the other side of the street. Sadly, that was short-lived. But it was pretty good. So there's a cacao friends, and here is a line friends. Oh, we've got a busy pedestrian crossing here.
And because there's so many English academies here, as well as night spots, you'll notice more foreigners. I think that came out weird, foreigners in this area than usual. I was one of them for four years. Even when I lived in Gumhodong, I was frequently here. One thing about this part of the city, Gangnam-gu specifically, is rent is about double the average of the rest of the city. These people are queuing up to grab a bus, and these red ones here will lead you out into the suburbs. There's a Zara. And I think I just spotted a Shake Shack across the street. by buses. I'll walk over to that side of the street later. This used to be a Dunkin' Donuts, and then it turned into a New Balance store. They've hit the reset button on that again. Duncan has appeared here and Dos Tacos is still there. Awesome. That was a regular there and at their Hongdae location. In fact, last time I was in Seoul, I made a point to go there. And this is an entrance to Shinnonyan Station. And just up there on the left, is Kyobo Books. And there's a really cool neighborhood straight ahead called Shinsa if you walk that way for a while towards the river. And just past that is Apujang. I think I'm gonna, well, there's a clear shot of Shake Shack. I think I'm gonna spin around here. And we'll head back the other way down that side street. Yakuk, that means pharmacy, just on the left. That thing didn't appear until I think my last year here. So these side streets here are where most of the fun takes place. There's some very popular clubs right around the corner. I wonder if they're still there.
Oh, it looks like it's just been converted into a bar. Speaking of which, there's a Samgali Poja. The Halal Guy is my favorite bar and the one that I'm hoping to go to tonight is their Voodoo. And the owner is LJ and she is awesome and she runs it with her brother. I always end up losing a lot of money to them playing darts at some point. I'm pretty good at darts and they know that. And they typically would let me win a few games. And they are also really good at darts, except the difference is I tend to drink a lot there. So you can see what that is going to lead to. Not good news if you're me. There used to be a batting cage in here. And some of these buildings have bars on the 6th, 7th, or 8th floor. Don't worry, beer happy. Well, I think this is where that baseball cage was. It's now a Dekta Bong. And did I see that right? There's a place up there. I don't know if the camera's picking it up with a very interesting name. Black Party. Looks like a Hoff. It's basically a Korean word for pub. What is Kangnam Chi Chi? There's another street that runs parallel to this that Voodoo is on that has bars and restaurants and that sort of thing as well. I'm at risk of getting a music copyright match walking by this place. That looks like it's a club. I think there used to be a club in that spot that had a no foreigners policy. Well, really, they could call it an Asians only policy because if you were a Korean American, you'd be allowed in. But if you looked like me, you weren't. And they said it's because we caused problems. And we said that's called <laughs> discrimination. And there's a place in Hongdae where I think I'm going to go for a walk tomorrow that also had the same kind of BS policy, Tin Pan. I wonder if they're still doing that. And I'm wondering... There used to be a duck albi restaurant over there. I don't think it's there anymore. That's too bad. All right, let's go see the other side of Kangnam. 
or the, this part of Gangnam. Gangnam Gu is an entire neighborhood. And Gangnam itself means south of the river, south of the Han River. that pedestrian crossing at? Well, it's not for quite a ways down there. I'm going to dip down into the metro station again. I said I would meet them around 7.45, it is 7.24. Doing okay for time. planters, but things get kind of crowded with them. All right, down the stairs I went up. to end back up at exit one. is now called Gangnam Square. down the side street then we'll come back on the main street and I'll finish up right around here. It's a brand new building. There used to be a Hojong Matcha right there. It's like an outdoor eatery. It's 
So at least on the surface, this area looks like it's doing well. Our favorite barbecue restaurant up this it was called Sole. And it did not survive the pandemic. And no, oh, thank you. It's something to right up there on the left and there's also a bar called Woodstock. We called it Downstairs Woodstock. It was in a basement that shut down in 2020. Although Upstairs Woodstock is still alive and kicking across the street apparently. There's where Johnny Rockets used to be. And all these streets, you need to be prepared to climb. And that there on the left was a ramen restaurant that was excellent. Oh, it's a Kalbi restaurant. And after a movie at the Mega Box here, this is where you would get let out. That's kind of a discount movie theater. The CGV is the more premium one. This area is not for everyone, but it was pretty much the perfect spot for me when I was living here. I'm definitely a high energy, big city person. And this is about as good as it gets anywhere I've ever been. I was extremely fortunate to get to live here. Of course, I would meet people that lived out in the middle of nowhere and they would kind of roll their eyes and be like, you live there? How do you stand that place? Well, to each their own. One huge advantage of here is taxi drivers, at least when I was here, would always be super picky about where they were going. They didn't want to drive for 30 minutes and then struggle to get a new fare, especially on a busy night like a Friday or Saturday. So if I was in Itaewon or Hongdae or any popular night spot, Shinchan, Shinchon. There would often be people begging taxis to take them home and the taxis would be picky. And then I'd come along and just be like, Gangnam Yuk, and without hesitation, <laughs> they would open their door and let me in. Because they know for sure when they come to this area, there's gonna be a lineup of people waiting at that cab to get a ride to wherever they're going. Also helped if you ever met someone and you wanted to go out. Often without even saying where you live, they would suggest, hey, let's go to Gangnam and have dinner. And you'd be like, okay, that works for me. 
This is a Jim Doc restaurant. Burgers Almighty. Shinonyan Station is just up ahead. And there used to be a Hooters just across the street. I'm not sure if it's still there. soft range. I wonder if they have axe throwing here. And there used to be a place I really like called Smashing Bowl in this new building here. The circles. I wonder if that's still there. I saw one of those near my Airbnb up in Jongno. Still there. Awesome. Alright, since I came this far, I might as well turn around at the main street here. That thing has a license plate. Awesome. The Hooters was just over there. And this is Shinonyan Station, which you can now take, I believe, to Gangnam Station on Shinmundang Line. <laughs> so this area is incredibly well served by transit. Wow, there used to be a really popular cafe in the ground floor of this building. That would have been packed around this time. All right, let's Check this side of the main street here. <laughs> there goes that micro car getting honked at. The Crapple Store. <laughs> right around the spot, there used to be an Apple authorized retailer. 
but I don't think Apple had an official presence in Korea at that time. And they updated the street lamp posts. I think I might have liked the old ones a little better. They're a bit more iconic. I think it was 2019 when I was here. My video around this area did quite well. It did about 30,000 views. There's Shake Shack. And that was a non-narrated video. But in my mind, this area was must-see for sentimental reasons, because I think visually it makes for an awesome video. Benches are new. <laughs> As are these share e scooters. And that is an extremely stylish Baskin Robbins. Gives me vibes of the hotel I stayed at in Bangkok, the standard. Similar kind of design language. that crossing I just kind of like the visual of oh, the next crossing is a little bit better from that point of view Let's see am I getting messaged yet where are you Don't text and record, folks. is that? Oh, it's a Lego <laughs> BTS thing. Moving on. Nothing to see there. Oh, 
my favorite Smoothie King used to be in here. Looks like all the retail is out of that spot. There's not been much in the way of vacant retail spots. I imagine spots got snapped up pretty quick. So not only does this area have the most expensive residential real estate in the city, but it also has the most expensive commercial real estate. This street here, Tehrano, or Tehran Row, sorry. I think per square foot has the most expensive office space in the city of Seoul. to gate 11 and on that note I think I'm gonna wrap this one up I've got some people to meet who are just waiting over on the other side of the street so I hope you enjoyed this walk around Gangnam let me know your thoughts and comments down below and if you wish to support what I do here on YouTube there's links to channel membership oh. <laughs> and Patreon support down below. And there's also a super thanks button. This is as good a spot as any to wrap this up. So thank you for watching. And I will catch you in the next one. Yoink! <laughs>